barbecue season is finally here. Imagine those smoky aromas. Cold beer. Maybe some summer fruit and something sweet to end the day. Is your mouth watering yet? I have just what you need. A cocktail that incorporates all of those flavors, making it a perfect pairing for your next barbecue. Or something to enjoy when dreaming about your next cookout. Let's make the barbecue julep. It's cocktail time. Hi friends of cocktails! With the summer approaching, it's time to fire up the grill and enjoy good food, good drinks and good company. So I'm glad you're here. Let's see what we need to make the barbecue julep cocktail. The base will be Aberlour 14 Double Cask, a wonderful 14-year-old single malt scotch, matured in a combination of Oloroso sherry casks and first fill American oak casks. That's a great woody component for our cocktail. And you can't have a julep cocktail without plenty of mint and a sweetener. For the syrup, I made an IPA craft beer syrup. No reduction this time, because of the strong fruity notes of this beer. I'll also add chocolate bitters and a couple of drops of saline solution. Chocolate and salt are always a great combination. And to top off the cocktail with a smoky aroma, I'll spray it with some pitted scotch. You can't go wrong with Arbeck. If you want plenty of smoke, I ask Curiada to add both whiskies to my collection on their website. So you can grab the bottles there. Find the link in the description. And for the garnish and dessert, campfire strawberries with torch marshmallow fluff. Before we make the cocktail, I'll show you how I made the beer syrup and the marshmallow strawberries. I went to a local microbrewery where a couple of dedicated guys create a wide range of excellent craft beers with interesting names and great artwork. I found a beer that will pair nicely with Aberlour 14. I decided on Lobicron Double IPA, which is a stronger, very hoppy variant of an IPA with ABV of 8%. Styrian Fox and Cascade Hops give the beer some citrus notes with berries, honey and subtle notes of pepper which will work great with our scotch. To start making the syrup, I'll pour the beer into a bowl in a way that releases as much carbonation as possible. Mixing the beer helps with that too, or you could leave it to sit for an hour or two. This will make sure our syrup doesn't foam up too much. When we heat it up to dissolve the sugar, to make a one-to-one -one syrup, add equal weight of beer and sugar in a pot. And don't worry if you don't find a double IPA. Finding the beer that works best with your choice of whiskey is a fun way to learn more about craft beers. Place on low heat, stirring occasionally. Check to see when the sugar dissolves completely. And as soon as that happens, your syrup is ready. We're not producing the beer this time, because the strong fruity notes of the IPA will be present in the syrup without applying too much heat to the beer. After it cools a bit, you can bottle your delicious IPA syrup. So, to answer... Legons! Yes, yes I can. Thank you for your question. Let's move on to make the dessert for our gathering. Campfire strawberries. I can't get marshmallow fluff, but it's super easy to make. All you need is one egg white, 80 grams of sugar, some vanilla extract, water, a hand mixer, and to be precise, a food thermometer. I whisk the egg white with 40 grams of sugar. You could do this by hand, but it would take a lot longer. Whisk until you get a nice meringue mixture, which is stiff enough that it stays in the bowl if you turn it upside down. Next, to get the right marshmallow fluff texture, we need to add some sugar syrup. Dissolve the other 40 grams of sugar in about 15 ml or half an ounce of water over medium heat. Once the sugar dissolves, you'll want to check the temperature and heat the syrup to 115 degrees Celsius or 240 Fahrenheit. Take it off the heat and slowly pour it into the meringue mixture while whisking at high speed. Add 4 drops of vanilla extract and whisk it in the mixture. Once you get the soft peaks, which you check by taking the whisk out of the mixture. You have a perfect homemade marshmallow fluff. That's when we get our version of the campfire ready and start preparing the strawberries. Dip the skewered strawberries before toasting with a torch. Repeat with all strawberries and make sure you have a couple extra, because these are a great treat for everyone. 
young and old. And a sure way to impress your guests with a sweet tooth. Now, all you have to do is make sure nobody eats all of the campfire strawberries before you make and enjoy the cocktail. Let Let's build. Since we are making a julep cocktail, I'll of course use a julep cup, but the rocks glass would work too. Take a handful of mint, about 8 to 10 leaves, give them a spank and toss them in the cup. I'll first add 60 ml or 2 ounces of Aberlour 14. Bourbon is used for the classic, but this scotch will work great in this barbecue julep. Gently model to release the oils and a strong mint aroma. Alcohol will help with that, so you don't have to overdo it, because mint can turn bitter. Now I add the syrup, 7.5 ml or a quarter of an ounce. I think this IPA beer syrup would also work great in a whiskey sour, but I'd love to hear your cocktail ideas for this as well. To add a few chocolate notes, which will go great with mint and a strawberry, I'll add 3 dashes of chocolate bitters. And like we often do, 2 drops of 20% saline solution, which will enhance all of the flavors. Now we add ice, I'll crush it using a Louis bag and my brand new cocktail time melon custom made by a friend of the channel using oak and ash wood. I love how it looks and I look forward to years of using it to crush ice for juleps and other cocktails. Fill up the cup, give it a few turns to chill and dilute, but also to work the mint around the cup. Then pack the cup with more ice and gently press it down. That's a perfect use of a julep strainer. Garnish with a mint bouquet and a campfire strawberry. Don't forget to spank the mint and place the strawberry and a straw next to the mint. Final step to add some liquid smoke is to spray the whole cocktail with Arbeck fitted scotch. It's up to you how much is enough. You should be able to smell the smokiness straight away. So just dive in. Cheers! The aroma is the perfect combination of fresh mint and smokiness. Like the classic mint julep, this too has a sweet profile with a boozy backbone but it's also malty and fruity from the IPA syrup. Subtle peppery spiciness lingers on the aftertaste, together with fresh mint and chocolate. And the sweet marshmallow fluff strawberries are a wonderful way to end your cocktail on a sweet fruity note. Everything just brings up memories of a barbecue picnic. It's perfect. If you'd like to make other julep variations, I've done the classic mint julep and my own rose julep in the past. Enjoy and I'll see you next week. Cheers!